everyone. Today we are in Niagara Falls. This is our first time visiting Niagara Falls and we chose to visit the Canada side. But we would love to hear from you in the comments which side is your favorite or what attraction is your favorite. In this video, we're going to share with you our top five attractions on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls. And we'll share a few tips with you as well that we learned during our visit. These are all paid attractions, but in the next video, we'll share with you some of the things you can do and see for free. Before we jump into the attractions, though, I wanted to mention that we decided to purchase a Niagara Parks Pass, and I really think that is a great way to go. You can purchase packages or tickets at the Niagara Parks website. They have three different package deals. Um, starting at $59 Canadian up to $99, we went ahead and purchased the Adventure Pass Plus. $99 Canadian is less than $75 US, and we thought that was really reasonable. So we did learn a little bit about these passes as we visited some of the sites. So we'll tell you a little bit about what we discovered as we take a look at the attractions. Our first stop of the day was the Power Station, which is also home to one of the newest attractions, the Tunnel. If you've purchased a pass online, you need to check in at one of the Welcome Centers or any of the attractions. When when you check in, they will set you up with a lanyard with a card that can be scanned to let you into each of the attractions. What we didn't realize is that they have a timed entry system for all of the popular attractions. So when you check in that first time, it's good to have an idea of how you want to schedule your visits. So we had to schedule kind of on the fly and ended up needing to make a lot of changes. Most people who visit only visit for one or two days, so they schedule things pretty close together. But we were going to be here for four days, and we like to take time to learn the history and read all the signs, so we ended up spacing our visits out more. When we first scheduled, we just went with their recommendations, but by the time we were done with our first stop here at the power station, we were already late for our second stop. So then we had to reschedule things, which isn't a problem, but then they have to give you tickets because the card won't work for that, and then you have to keep track of those tickets. Here's what our itinerary that we scheduled for ourselves ended up looking like. Is diverted upstream of the falls. So imagine if all of the water was coming over the falls. So the water passes through hydroelectric plants before returning to the river downstream, downstream. of the falls. Right, right. So it explains what's in there. You can book a guided tour of the power station to learn more about it. And many of the signs also have QR codes that you can scan for an audio tour. After spending quite a bit of time exploring the power station, it was time for us to head down to the tunnel. So we're going to 
going to go down uh, 180 feet to the tunnel below. It's a long tunnel, 2,200 feet long, works out to about 730 yards, 680 meters. This is called a pen stock. It's 10 feet in diameter, made of cast steel, and it's what carried the water from the upper Niagara River down a 136 foot drop to spin a turbine down below. There's a rotor on top of that shaft that would spin 250 times a minute from water turning that turbine and turning the shaft in turn. They produce 25 hertz of power here for 101 years. Water left that turbine and emptied into a big pit you see out back called the wheel pit. That wheel pit is part of our building. Uh, it's not the tunnel. Think of it like the basement over which all that equipment is housed and built into. So when the water hit the bottom, the slope brought it back this way. It would leave our building through the tunnel you're all going to walk through, and that tunnel would take it back and put it in the river below the falls. Look up at the ceiling. Oh no, it looks a little sketchy. <laughs> So this tunnel is 180 feet below the power station above. It was constructed 115 years ago. And it's interesting to think that this was mainly excavated by hand. It was constructed by hand and that, you know, thousands and thousands of gallons of water would flow through here after being used in the power station. So the tunnel itself is about 2,200 feet long, so a little bit shy of half a mile. And it's about 60 degrees down here, 15 degrees Celsius. Oh, I see the falls. Oh, I bet that isn't Horseshoe Falls. That's the American Falls over there. What is it, Bridal Veil? Do you need a poncho? We wouldn't want you guys to get washed away. You washed away. <laughs> you think a poncho is going to keep them from getting washed, washed away? away. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, there's the boat. This one with the blue ponchos is the U.S. boat, the Maid of the Mist. And in a few minutes, the Canadian hornblower with the red ponchos will come in. They just take turns, one right after the other, coming into Horseshoe Falls. After leaving the power station, we walked over to the Table Rock Welcome Center. Journey Behind the Fall and Niagara's Fury are both accessed from the Welcome Center, as well as the plaza that overlooks the falls. We found that parking in the falls parking lot was a nice central location for both of these. If you were wanting to go to any of the other attractions, which are all a little bit further out, you could take the WeGo shuttle bus, which is included with the passes. We were here on a Monday in August. It's right about lunchtime, and the Welcome Center was super crowded. 
I would imagine that is probably always the case because behind the Welcome Center is the plaza where you can view the falls. We managed to grab something for lunch in the cafeteria. It was pretty pricey and honestly not that great. There are other restaurants and several shops in the Welcome Center too. Then it was time for us to check in at Journey Behind the Falls. If you're claustrophobic, this one could be tough. It starts while you're in the waiting line in the queue. There's a lot of people, very crowded, humid up there in the waiting area. And then you take a crowded elevator down to the tunnels here. Of course, there's the low ceilings, but it's more than that. It, it's the humidity, the noise, and just the number of people that are down here that make it difficult. I'm a little bit claustrophobic and I did have a moment where I had to take a few deep breaths and thankfully it passed but I could see this being really difficult for people who are claustrophobic. Tim isn't normally claustrophobic and by the end he was ready to get out of here. In case you're trying to place where this tunnel is in relation to the power plant tunnel, here is the power plant. And here is Table Rock, where Journey Behind the Falls starts. Both platforms are right down here. So the tunnel under the power plant goes all the way down and under Table Rock. Here's the platform we're on right now, Journey Behind the Falls. And here is the platform from the tunnel. <laughs> Something else that was included with our pass was two days of unlimited access to the Falls Incline Railway. The railway connects the Table Rock area to the Falls View area up on the hill. This is where a lot of the hotels and restaurants are. Oh, seats. Over to there. 
You can see the WeGo shuttle buses down below. So you get a two-day pass on both the railway and the WeGo. It starts the minute you check in to the Welcome Center or your first attraction. So it didn't work so well for us since we were spreading this out over four days. But you can purchase additional days if you want to. The next evening, we hit our third attraction, which is a fireworks cruise on the Hornblower. This is not part of the package. It is something you have to purchase separately. The evening cruise doesn't get quite as close to the falls as the daytime one does. So if you want to do the cruise but not get quite as wet, this might be a good option. Hello, we're waiting for a couple other people. Oh, here they come. Are you with them? No. No. We're with them. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. You mean to tie that for you? No, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't need you to tie that for me. This one was the most difficult to find parking for. All of the parking is metered, so you're going to be paid no matter where you park. We parked in the Falls parking lot yesterday, and I believe that was 35 Canadian for the whole day. Where we ended up parking here was on-street metered parking, and I believe it was about $30 for the three hours we were here. It was the most expensive parking of the whole trip. The next day, we would learn a couple little tricks about parking. The next morning, we were off to another attraction. Again, you take an elevator down to this tunnel in order to get to the White Water Walk. Yeah, yeah. nice and cool in the tunnel. This was the least crowded attraction we visited, and honestly, one of our favorites. How fast is the water? All along the boardwalk are signs explaining a lot of the history of the falls, the river, and the gorge here, as well as about the ecology and geology of the river, too.
trees down here. We brought water and some snacks with us, so when we got to the very end, we stopped and had a little snack before we headed back. Boardwalk is about a quarter mile long. They get down there. I don't see any. Yeah, there's four of them over there. You lovely people. The gorge is 230 feet below street level. So if the elevator was to break down, this is how you get out of the gorge. You don't know it ahead of time. Until, like, there's free parking across the street. Like I mentioned earlier, all the parking is metered, but the parking lot across the street had a sign that you could go inside and get a ticket and park for free there. Then we headed to our next attraction, which has a large parking lot that is free. Woohoo! No, they just, so they come in from over there, they do a whoof over there. Then they come over here and they sit over here for a minute. They must be like talking to them about that or something. And then they turn around and go back. No, just out. At least the last one did. So there's just one thing? Uh-huh. That's America. That's America. Um, that is like Whirlpool State Park. Oh, okay. So hiking trails. And I'm looking and I'm like, oh, well, look, that's cool. Like you can come right out onto the river down here. Oh. But then I'm thinking, okay, but how do you get from up there to down here? Yeah. <laughs> how many stairs or like, is there some place you park where you're already down low? I bet there isn't. Well, <laughs> and there might, I mean, it might be a trail as opposed to stairs. Right, There's like switchbacks. Or... Yeah, yeah. There's the jet boat. This attraction is the Whirlpool Aero Car. We thought this was a really fun attraction as well. There wasn't huge lines, it wasn't overly crowded, and you got a really great view of a different part of the river. And if that were to fail, just ahead of us here at the tunnel that we are slowly approaching, you'll see a gray looking bucket inside. That'll be a rescue car. It holds four passengers and one operator at a time. In 107 years of operation, we've never actually used it for rescue purposes, only for training and to make sure it still works. And if there are to fail, there are 32 of us on board, I'm sure we'll figure something out. This one is great because you don't have to worry about what side you're on. Halfway through, they have you walk around the aero car so that you switch sides and everybody gets a great view. Also called the United States of America. We may see some people walking below on a trail or sitting on a rock and we are turning some people along at a great fence. It'll be located at the Whirlpool State Park in Niagara Falls, New York. I want to thank you for riding with us today with the World Boyle Car. So these were our top five attractions.
These are all paid attractions, but in the next video, we'll share with you some attractions that we found that you can see for free. Thank you so much for joining us on this adventure. We hope you enjoyed coming along with us. Again, we'd love to hear your experiences at Niagara Falls. Feel free to leave us some comments below, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.